maybe if we knew why, we wouldn't try so hard. Some call it a hobby, others might call it a passion, we might even call it a stupid dream. But me and a small handful of my friends, we chase that dream. Knowing the consequences, it could all go bad at any time. Day in and day out, spending every penny, risking every moment, just to chase that dream. And it's not about fame or fortune. It's about having the freedom to do what we love every day. This is for me, my team, and my friends. We're all out here chasing that dream. We're all just too damn stubborn to quit. Previously on Project 253. Dudes, check it out. We're at this garage. Small town, not far from us. Um, we're gonna check out. Early last winter, I found a 1966 Chevy 2 sitting in a small garage not far from home. The car is not the SS model or the fastback, but its body style matches the Acadia and I have it home. It's gonna make a beautiful little addition to our fleet. Like, you gotta be kidding me, right? Look at this damn... And who better to take this project on than our drag race guy himself, Brent Lagasse. So we made the deal, loaded up the car, brought it home, and started really getting into it. This is gonna be quite the project for all of us here. This car needs a motor, a transmission, complete driveline, everything to run, and lots of love. It's an old rolling chassis, left over from a race car that once had a life. And if anybody's gonna bring it back, it's gonna be my man Brand. Until now, Brent's main ride, his main focus, has been his Chevrolet Malibu. With a 383 stroker, this car has been built up the way he likes it. His style, every little detail is covered. The man knows what he's doing, and he's very familiar with the G-Body platform. He's had a relationship with this car since he was in high school. Now you can't have one without the other. Back in high school, we used to call this guy DJM because he was always rocking the super loud sound systems, always had the best music. That hasn't changed. New for this year, supercharger. Brand new heads, new intake, throttle body, headers, so many mods to list. Cars being tuned. <laughs> Tires, 
doing his own body work with metal fab on his 240SX. Kara has had a complete engine swap. KA24, a huge turbo. It cranks out even more power than my RX-7, and I can't catch him on the street. I also notice a big change in his perception with the car, and how he feels about it, and how he treats it. To many, a car is a tool, just something to get you from point A to point B, or something to use to show off, flashy wheels, crazy paint job. But he's starting to feel the soul of the car, to respect it and what it can do, and realize there's a bigger connection between man and machine than he initially thought. Driving is a spiritual thing, and I can see him leaning towards that. Woo -woo, that's how you do it, that's how you do it. That was sick, that was sick. I didn't work on the RX-7 at all last year. It stayed at Jamie's house for the entire winter. I had other plans, hopes and dreams of putting another drift car together for the 2019 season. I couldn't have been more wrong. Every season, I plan out a budget to get myself and my car to the racetrack to a handful of events that I can enjoy. And this budget is planned out dollar for dollar. This season, working on my 240SX, I decided to roll the dice and spend that money on the car. I didn't have the time in the winter. So this is a project that was on somebody else's list. A list that began to grow out of control. The car got pushed further and further down the priority list. Because it was somewhat of a sponsor deal, it got left on the back burner. And I was left with no car and no money for my entire season. I learned a lot of things this year. This car has been around long enough to show it off. It was supposed to be to save the RX-7, a drift car that I didn't care too much about, but something fast enough and cool enough to go out there every weekend and have a blast. I just do not have the financial backing to keep going on all the projects that I have in my head. I have to learn to break it down and focus on one thing at a time. And realistically, I'm not into this 240 enough to push forward with the project. If I had to get rid of something, this is definitely on the chopping block. That's why the motor came out. It ended up just being a rolling chassis. Now it's sitting in storage. What happens with the car is yet to be decided. I really don't know what to do with it. Which is one of my biggest problems, being indecisive. But the entire time, all the signs were pointing to one thing. For okay. If I was worried about banging it up, i look up to people like Aaron Parker, who's had his RX-7 drifting for nine years. If I could drift one car, and only one, it would definitely be the RX-7. I have a passion for drifting. I absolutely love everything about it. And I absolutely love everything about this car. And at the end of the day, it's way more fun to drive on a racetrack than it is on the street anyway. So whatever happens, I move forward with this plan. The RX-7 is my car. This is me.
This time, I've got a lot more support. Early spring, I started hanging out with Nick, the man behind Nick's drift shop. And it's been one hell of a ride ever since. Here at Nick's Drift Shop, you can make your wildest creations a reality. He builds drift cars from the ground up, specializing in fabrication and heavy modifications. From A to Z, anything you need to go fast and go sideways, even custom angle kits. He's currently developing an entire system for the Miata chassis, a chassis that he's chose for next season to try to make it into the NCC. It's not just him, he has a team with him. Ludo Vic, driving an automatic G35. Hoping to get this car into the NCC as well. Both these guys are gunning with high expectations and shooting for the stars. Follow along on this journey. 